Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning again, Rob. Great to be here. Delegate Michael Height. Good morning, Robert. Great We're going to be here. It's only 11 o'clock this morning. Friday 5 starts right after the 9.30 break. Yes, sir. And we're back Monday and Tuesday until 11 o'clock as well. Produced by the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin, and joined on the telephone now by the governor of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Governor Justice, good morning to you. How are we doing today? Great, sir. Thank you very much. Also, Chief of Staff Brian Abraham. Brian, good morning to you. Thanks for joining the call. Thank you. How are you? Great. Thank you. Governor, you're in the eastern panhandle today, sir. I am. I am. You got a busy schedule, and uh, what's what's part of your agenda that you'd like to share with us today? Oh, I guess we'll be going to CMC, and uh, you know, with uh, and seeing just uh, the progress that's starting to be made, and and welcoming them in every way for all the great work that they're that they're going to do, and all the jobs that they're going to provide to the great people of the Eastern Panhandle, and. Uh, and then after that, we'll uh, we'll be going by the uh, the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, you know, and and giving them a great big check to sustain and and uh, perpetuate all the good stuff that they're doing. So uh, so it, it'll it'll be a fun day, and uh, we'll uh, you know I always enjoy coming because you know I love the progress that's being made all over the place. I know there's challenges with infrastructure and different things, but. Uh, we're trying to meet those challenges and keep up, and uh, so it'll be it'll be a fun day. Governor, let's talk about your eight years in the uh, big chair here in the state, and uh, your desire to become the next uh, senator in West Virginia. Uh, talk to me a, a minute or two about what this uh, economy in the state was like when you started, and what you're leaving behind as you get ready to finish up your eight years. Whew. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this was. Uh... This was a shocker to me, and a and a and a, and a tough start. But uh, but the reality is just as simple as just this. I mean, you know, I'm a business guy. I'm not a politician. I mean, for crying out loud, I've said that ten million times. I I'm really proud of my really conservative values, and and my track record stands for that every way, all across the board. And uh, and so, with all that being said, though, I do. I always felt like the number one responsibility I had was to mind the store and to get the economy, get the economics right. Because if you've got the economics right, then you spin off surpluses and you're able to do so many different things to help so many when really, truly, if the economics are, are, are not right, you're upside down, then all you can do is cut people. And, uh, and then you have more and more people migrate out of our state and it's uh, just an absolute mess. But, uh, but so in the beginning, it was really tough. I mean, we were bankrupt as bankrupt could be. We, uh, we, we brought in a whole lot of new ideas and a little bit of creativity you know, sprinkled with that and a lot of blessings from God above. And lo and behold, everything starts kicking in and off we go. And the net net of the whole thing is, and I'd, I'd put our record up against anybody tenfold, any governor that's ever been and everything. Honestly, the performance of this state today is off the chart and uh and we don't want to screw it up you know that's the big thing i mean you know i i want i want us to continue to perpetuate our state and continue the goodness and continue to see travel guys worldwide travel guys saying that west virginia is the place to come i mean honest to pete who could have ever had such a thought in west virginia that you know that we would be something other than the, the tail end of a bunch of bad jokes and so so I, you know, I, uh, from the standpoint of the Senate deal, you know, uh, there's there's nothing in me that, uh, you know, really and truly is just fired up about going to Washington D.C. Here's but but here's what I really think, and I think with all my soul, I think you know D.C. is an absolute just mess beyond belief. I think I can bring some really fresh ideas to that. And I think I'll stand up for West Virginia every single day in every way. Now, with all that, it just so happened that my number was strong. And that's all there is to it. I'm probably the only one that really could get rid of Joe Manchin. I'm the only one that could really flip the Senate back to being what it ought to be, and that is a conservative, rock-solid Republican Senate. And with this in it, and anybody that would think for one second if the Biden administration and what's going on in this country, we're going the right way, it has to be an idiot. 
because absolutely the Biden administration and what is happening in this country is crumbling our country. And so with all that being said, my number got drawn, you know, and I'm going to do it and I'll do it. I'll do it the very best of, my, of all my abilities, and uh, I'll do it just like I did the governorship, you know, and uh, with just common sense talking that absolutely leads to good, sound sense in what we, we're doing. So the net net of the whole thing is hopefully, uh, well, I look, I look forward in every way to uh, flipping the Senate and being the vote that, uh, that absolutely makes a real difference. So so that's where that's where I'm at. Governor, while the state's house is in order financially, you can't argue much with the state's economic success. Your personal finances are in question. There is uh, several there are several stories out there in regards to situations involving contractors and businesses and such. What can you tell the public that would put their mind at ease regarding your own personal financial situation? I would just say this, and this is all there is to it, you know, uh, it's it's preposterous, to tell you the truth, you know, to think that uh, my family started out, you know, my grandparents never had indoor plumbing. We built an empire of businesses, and we employ thousands and thousands of people. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, every single tax is always paid. Everybody's taken care of. Everything always seems to work out, and it always works out because our businesses and our people that work for us and everything love us because we love them. And with all that being said, what you hear so often is so distorted and so much garbage. It's it's just plain just that. And so at the end of the day, I would say, You know, let's worry about what we ought to be worrying about in my job. My job is to take care of the state, and I've done that and done that very handsomely. My job when when I was running our businesses was to grow our businesses into that empire, and we did it. Now, you know, and if you want to listen to to the noise, listen to the noise, but it's a waste of time because every single thing we have will absolutely be taken care of in every way. It always has been. Bill? Yeah, good morning, Governor. And I want to kind of pick up on the uh, that theme. Uh, you started off kind of rocky uh, when you shifted from Democrat to Republican. Uh, the And you, you made various statements, uh, uh, the – one of your first State of the Union, State of the State addresses, uh, there's a lot of fun poked at you. But my sense, and I'm asking for confirmation on this, that with COVID, you became a rock star. Everybody was looking to what you and West Virginia for how you handled COVID. Since then, I, I think your popularity has gone continue to go up even though your personal baggage uh could have been used against you it's never picked up you've been like teflon you've uh, the personal problems do not resonate with the voters why do you think your popularity stemming from covid continues to go up as much and as rapid as what it has well you know this sounds braggadocious but i just say judge me by my deeds I mean, for crying out loud, look at how we've taken care of the store. Look at the buttons we've pushed and what's happened. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, it was great. You know, from the standpoint, you may say, well, well, I mean, you know, in COVID, you know, the po- his popularity went sky high. Well, it did because I took care of you. I did what was the right thing. I came every day. I even came on Christmas Day and did a briefing on Christmas Day. I mean, I stayed right dead on top of it in every way because our state could have been devastated beyond belief. It was doggone hard enough to lose thousands, but we could have lost tens of thousands, tens and tens of thousands of people. And and so I tried to keep you abreast, tell you the truth, and absolutely not distort anything, tell you the bad, tell you the good, and, and, and that's how I've managed everything. But from the standpoint of popularity, you know, you're exactly right. You know, I mean, just imagine this. And, th- and this is testimony in many ways because 
you know, it's baby dog. Baby dog and I go through a lot of drive through windows. And 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 really and truly, we 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 do all the time. I almost can't go through a drive-through window at a fast food place that somebody in front of me that I have no idea who they are is not buying my food. And then they wave to me and they toot the horn and off they go, <laughs> and everything. Well, I'm gonna tell you, for a politician, if that isn't testimony that really and truly what the people think, and the people wouldn't think that. If I hadn't delivered, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm going to continue to do my job and run through the finish line until the very last day. That's why I'm coming today. That's why you don't see any signs. I mean, can you imagine a U.S. senator race and I haven't put up a sign? Well, the reason for it is I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do my job and let the people, because the people know me, the people know me, and I and they'll judge me by my deeds, and that's what they should do. Delegate Michael Height. Good morning, Governor. It's good to have you on today. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the Republican-led legislature and your administration both have seemed to focus on economic development in the state of West Virginia. Um, and, and it seems like we've been bringing jobs to West Virginia and, and boosting the economy. Um, so both – the, the legislature and your administration have done an excellent job in that regard. Um, but things are a little bit different in, in D.C. So as you transition from leading the state to um, being one of many in the swamp, what do you think your focus will be in D.C. if you were elected uh, senator? Well, Mike, I can't hardly hear you, you know, but, but I think I got it. Uh, but I mean, here, here's the whole thing, you know, and I, I heard this stuff a long time ago. You know, I mean, I was on the Board of Education, the only other office I've ever run for in my life. And and uh, and a lot of people said in the beginning, said, you know, I know you know business law, but you don't understand school law. Well, I mean, it took about 15 minutes for me to get up to speed on school law or whatever law, because really and truly, at the end of the day, you always have to work within the parameters of where you're working, you know. And and so when I go to D.C., you know, as far as how I interact and how I work there with the people there and everything, you know, it, it sure it'll be different. Sure it's different. But at the same time, you know, it uh, – my goodness gracious sakes, eleven. The the biggest thing that you'll do right off the get go is you'll flip the Senate from being, you know, Joe Mansonized. You'll flip the Senate to a, a a Republican Senate, a conservative Senate, and everything, which is essential beyond belief. From the standpoint of just imagine this, you know. And I hope and pray with all in me in every way that uh, because I'm really close to the Trump family and love them to death and and I've been that way forever. But if Donald Trump wins, imagine who his buddy's going to be, you know. And at the end of the day, because it's going to be me, Big Jim, you know. And really and truly, uh, we we talk all the time and and we just uh, you know. Eight days ago, I was sitting in the driveway here talking to him, you know, and, and talking about just the travesty of what he's having to go through, you know, in this trial, you know, that I would say is just a bunch of crap, you know. But, but nevertheless, imagine, just imagine that you'd have a senator from West Virginia that's as close to the president as I am, you know. And, and so, so with all that being said, sure, sure, Michael, it'll be different. It'll be one of a hundred, but at the same time, you know, hopefully I'll be the voice that, that truly brings something to the table from the standpoint that I employ thousands of people. I've got a lot of business sense. I've got a lot of talents in regard to that. I know how to talk to people. I'll be respectful, uh, you know, from the standpoint of, from this standpoint, just stand there throwing rocks back and forth at one another. I mean, what's that getting done? You know, at the end of the day, you know, we best better try to do something in the right way for this country because, you know, I, you know, I just think 
You have no energy policy in the country. This country should be Saudi Arabia today. We ought not have a $34 trillion deficit, which is more money than any of us could ever even think about. You know, why should we have that? We have no energy policy. Why should we blow our legs off every day from the standpoint of this belief that we can do without fossil fuels today? We can't do that today. You know, maybe someday, but surely not today. You know, but but absolutely it just goes on and on and on, you know, and uh and you know me, Michael, you know, I'm I'm uh you know, I'm gonna speak the truth. I'm always gonna do that, but at the same time, for crying out loud, you know, I brought you some real ideas along the way. You know, I stood up and said, We need to pass this bond referendum in, in regard to, you know, this roads to prosperity thing. Well lo and behold it took us off like a rocket ship. We need to expand and do stuff on tourism in every way. We need to put real money in tourism. Well, every dollar we put in it, it just returns dollars and dollars and more dollars and more dollars. You know, we absolutely don't need to blow our blooming legs off on this Amendment 2 thing, you know, and absolutely destroy our counties from our fire departments to the police departments to the schools, everything, and we'll have them all line up down there in Charleston. And, and beg for money. You know, we could have destroyed ourselves with those things. But, you know, every single one of those buttons that I've stood rock solid for, just tell me. Judge me by my deeds. Was it right? Was it right to absolutely get us on a pathway of getting rid of our state income tax? I mean, for crying out loud, all of a sudden now we're starting to grow people. And we need rid of that tax, you know, and I won't be here long enough to see it gone. But absolutely, we need rid of our state income tax. We need to be Tennessee. You know, we need to be Florida, you know, but uh, we've done a lot of good things. Governor, I appreciate your time this morning and uh, have a great day here in the eastern panhandle today. Best of luck in the upcoming right, thank election. You guys. Thank you all. You know, it's exciting, all this great stuff that's going on in the Eastern Panhandle. You know, just keep doing it. You're, you're, my goodness gracious, y'all are doing a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work. So stay at it. Thank you all. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Governor Jim Justice via telephone as he'll have his day here in the Eastern Panhandle at 9.02.